Hey friends, welcome back to the Pro Organizers Coach podcast and YouTube channel. Today I have with me our community member, Leslie Cutie. Thank you, Leslie, for coming on the show. Thank you for having me. I'm excited. This is my first podcast. Yay. Oh my goodness. Okay. So what I thought we would do today for all of you listening and watching, we are going to talk about Leslie's journey because in one year, she has gone through so many transformations and specifically, she is still a full-time teacher that also is a professional organizer, started and is running her business still with a full-time job. So I knew that was super important. And then we're also going to touch on some social media stuff, because I know for a lot of us, we get stuck on the social media, anything. Um, and I love the way that Leslie's doing it, because in our membership, she's kind of known as like our social media, like the person doing the best on social media. And it's hilarious, because from her perspective, she is like, well, I don't do that much or, you know, all these things. So I wanted to go back and make sure that we kind of look at the journey and the progression because when we're starting our business, it's super important to understand A, that it takes time, B, that you've got to take one step to get to the next step to get to the next one, but that you will grow and things will happen if you keep putting in the time and the effort and you give it the time to grow. So first, let me tell you a little bit about Leslie. The name of her business is Organizing with Leslie, and that's L-E-S-L-I-E, but she has it in parentheses, Owl, which is super cute because her logo is an owl. Um, she launched her business in January of 2023, so everything we're talking about has been done in a little over a year. Mm -hmm. um, she serves the Louisiana North shore and surrounding areas, as well as virtual clients, which I know a lot of mm -hmm. us love to, to learn about. Um, and then she loves almost everything to do with organizing, but especially the coaching slash teaching piece, which makes sense. You're, you know, you're a teacher for a living. Um, the, her company name is three words, but to her, the most important word is the smallest one with, which I think is beautiful. She truly enjoys helping people learn the skills needed to maintain their own organization. And this is why when she works with her clients, she includes the coaching and teaching piece, which is beautiful because you, you're you taking who you are and what, what you've already done in your previous life or current mm -hmm. life, you know, and, and putting that into organizing. Mm -hmm. And that's what I love about what we do is we can make it anything we want. And it also opens so many doors. Like everyone's story is so different. Right. Um, so yeah, I love it. Okay. So first, tell let's go back to the beginning. Tell us a little bit about last year, like January-ish, when you actually went to launch, you were still working mm -hmm. as a full-time teacher, correct? Or principal? I'm actually, what is it? I'm an assistant principal. Mm -hmm. um, assistant. So somewhere between teacher and principal, I'm an assistant principal. Um, and yes, I... So my family had gone through some um, changes. We had sold a house, rented a small house while we built. Um, and then we moved into our new build. And um, two, two months later, Hurricane Ida decided that it needed four oak trees in the middle of it. And so our brand new house was completely, not completely destroyed, but it was not livable by any means. And so then we had to pack up quickly um, and move out and that took a whole lot of different organization like I'm going to a different space we live with family then we live somewhere else where are all my belongings going like keeping up with all that was a, a big task for me and then when we moved back home my husband and I just got to talking and he was like Leslie that all what we've been through all the moving you're you're just organized by nature like it's just what you do um, and I always have, and I'm, I don't say that to pat myself on the back, that's just kind of who my DNA is just built that way. Um, but when we moved back, he and I got to talking and he was like, I really think you could help other people. I don't know why you're not doing what you're so good at in helping other people. And so I'm like, okay, I didn't think that was a thing, right? Um, and so I watched a Netflix series that I'm sure everyone's familiar with. And I was like, oh, it is a thing, okay. <laughs> So it kind of just started marinating the idea in my mind. And then on January 1st, I was sitting on the couch and I was like, you know what? I'm just, I'm almost 50 years old. If I'm going to do it, let's go now. And so I applied for my LLC on January 1st, sitting on the couch. Love it. Love it. <laughs> and 
you know, I think sometimes this is why a lot of us when we're first starting out, it's actually good to get feedback from people that know us, not necessarily feedback on what they think, like the name of our business should be or mm -hmm. like the business details, but it's good to get feedback of people can see things in us that sometimes we don't see in ourselves, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. you know? And so I think that's beautiful that your husband was like, what are you doing? Why would you not be doing this for other people? You know, and planted that mm -hmm. seed for you. Um, Okay, so that was January 1st, and then mm -hmm. I think you, and that was literally the day I launched my, the membership, which, you know, oh. is amazing, mm -hmm. um, and then so a few months later, you came in and joined the membership around, like, beginning of March, somewhere in there. Tell me where where you were at at that point. So you were a few months in, the business had launched. So I, I found you long before... I'll let you know I found you, if that makes sense, because I was listening to your podcast, and I'll be very honest with you, your podcast set my business up, and I don't know if you still have those episodes, but those very beginning episodes, I mean, I literally would sit there and listen to you morning after morning and take notes, okay, and make myself a list of, okay, you need to do this, 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 and this, and just kind of tick off all the things, because I'm not an entrepreneur, I've never wanted to do that, so I don't have that mindset of all the things that needed to be done. But you were so thorough in helping me figure that out. Um, and that I was like, okay, now I I've got to keep her in my life. <laughs> and so that's when I reached out to you like, hey, what else? Like, and that's when I joined the community, I think around the beginning of March, yeah. Yeah, and I remember, and I, I say this with love, but I remember with you, whenever you first came in, there was almost this thought of, you know, within the next few months, I'm going to launch, I'm going to have a list of clients, I'm going to, you know, retire, like all the things. And mm -hmm. I say that because I think a lot of us in the beginning, it is good to dream big. But mm -hmm. then we have to be realistic with the mm -hmm. fact that yes, we can reach those dreams. It's just probably going to take a little bit more time than mm -hmm. what we think it is, especially in the beginning. And I remember mm -hmm. there for a little bit, you, you would get not upset with me, but you were like, Samantha, where are my clients? Like, where are they at? What is happening? You're telling me to plant these seeds. It's not working. And I would be like, hold on, Leslie, I promise. Just keep doing it. <laughs> they will come. I promise they will come. Um, and so they finally did start to come. The, mm -hmm. the thing about you being a full-time, you know, still in the workforce full-time is you only had weekends. So I really yeah. want to dive into that because I think yeah. that for a lot of people, they're still in that boat, which is good mm -hmm. for your, it's good for your finances that you can still pay your bills and not have the pressure of the business mm -hmm. being the only thing bringing in income, mm -hmm. but it's not necessarily the best for growing your business fast. Like your business right. can still grow. It's just, right. you don't have as much energy as someone that jumps in full time. Um, so there's pros and cons to both, but what did you figure out or like looking back now, knowing that you realized, okay, so this is what I have to work with, which I think, you know, was essentially weekends. We had talked about evenings there for a little bit, but you were like, by the time I get off work, I don't have time or the energy to go do a full session for someone. Um, and but so that's where my virtual came in. That's where I started mm -hmm. the virtual. Yeah. Yeah. And so I want you to talk a little bit about that because there for a minute, it almost felt like for you, well, I only have weekends, but then you found a way to be like, no, I actually have more than just weekends. So will you talk a little bit about that? Sure. So yeah, the weekends, obviously that was my main thing. And I was really focusing just on Saturdays because I still kind of needed, I felt like I needed Sunday to kind of do business type things that aren't making money necessarily, but they, they were important in the beginning to get some things down. Um, and so I just blocked off my time and just looked at what I could do, not skipping we do still have one child at home so not skipping any of her activities and things like that still you know spending time with my adult children but making sure that I had availability for clients and I'll be very honest with you I was scared to death that my clients were going to be like no I'm not doing this on the weekend like if you can't see me during the week I'm you're not for me and when I say scared at the beginning I was scared to tell anybody my schedule or or not be um, hired because of that now I just know that then we're just not for each other yet, you know, or, or we'll make it work out. Um, and so we, I, I did work on weekends. Um, being in the school system, I am able to have long extended breaks as well, like um, Christmas holiday, Thanksgiving, you know, those kinds of holidays. 
And so I have more extended time to do large projects that take time. And then of course I have my summers. So I'm able to do that, but I do a lot of my um, business in work at home when I get home in the evening. And when I say a lot, it's not a lot of work. It's just stuff that I have to do. And then I just started thinking, you know, there's this great big world out there. And if somebody speaks English, because I don't know any other language, then I can probably help them virtually if they have hands and feet and can do the physical labor themselves. And so um, I kind of dipped my toes in the water on that um, and launched, not launched it, but I kind of promoted it real hard around Black Friday um, and and Cyber Week. So that I kind of started on Black Friday and went through Cyber Week. And, and I started getting clients that way. And I was like, oh, there are people like in other states who will hire me to sit on a computer with a game plan for them. And then I can work this in the evenings when I get home for an hour and a half or two hours, whatever I need to do, um, and, and still earn money that way. And that's worked out really well, um, better than I thought it was going to actually. Um, and, and the feedback that I'm getting is because I see, I just, as an organizer, we just see things a little differently than other people do. And so even though I'm not physically in your space, I am um, virtually in your space and they're sending me pictures. And so that all just kind of works. So um, going back to how do I make it all work on the evening times? I mean, a lot of times I don't watch TV. I lay in bed and I create things on Canva. I, you know, create social media posts. I listen to podcasts. Um, I listen to podcasts almost every morning to get inspiration or ideas. I mean, our POC group is excellent. I can send them chats and ask people questions. You know, so really, if I'm not at my other job, I am working hour full time. Yeah, well, and, and I know I remember you saying at one point, even when you're at your daughter's activities, like you're still there in person, but while she's doing her, you know, trainings or, or whatever right. she is doing, you're sitting in the car, like working on Canva or, or messaging people or yeah. those types of so things. Like I would drive to karate, sit in the car while she was doing karate. And exactly that I would be either tweaking my website or responding to somebody that had, you know, reached out needing um, support. And so I just fit it in. It wasn't necessarily that it was scheduled. It was just, it into my day. The only thing that was scheduled necessarily was my um, weekends and my time off from my other job to do this. <laughs> right. <laughs> yeah. Well, no. And I mean, honestly, I love that because it's like we said, it's taking, you know, a lot of as business owners and especially as solopreneurs that are starting and creating a business, we have to look at what are our non-negotiables, which for you obviously mm -hmm. is spending time with your child and taking her mm -hmm. to activities. And, and then we also have to look at our work schedule. Like we have to look at everything and then figure out, okay, is this important enough to me to, you know, the times I do have free to mm -hmm. focus on the work mm -hmm. and plant those seeds and actually get the stuff done versus resting or watching Netflix, which we all need that too, you know, like finding mm -hmm. that balance. Um, so what I love though, about what you've done. So what have you seen with back to, um, only being available on weekends and then like your, your breaks and stuff, has that, do you feel like that's kept you from growing? Do you feel like it has ended up working out the way that it was supposed to? I really feel like it's worked out the way that it was supposed to. Um, yes. I go back to what you said a minute ago. I did want to just like take off and soar and, um, you know, be full time and just like the snap of a finger. And that's not, that's not my reality. And I think that's good because I do think I would have gotten completely overwhelmed with not just not the, the work part, but the business side, because I wasn't in that mindset. And so now I've learned, I keep checklists, I keep my list of things I need to do. So when I have that time, yes, I can go and do it. But I have not had not one client tell me, oh, you know, you only work on Saturday and Sunday, we're not going to be able to work together. I think I had one, but we never kind of firmed it up. That was kind of iffy on it, but we were going to make it work out and then something happened. But for the most part, that has not been um, an issue. And I think it's kind of what you say all the time. Our people come to us. So the mm -hmm. people who want me come to me and they're going to find me. And a lot of times they're working people too, who aren't at home for me to come and organize their house during the, the week. So it just works out for all of us. Well, and I think also the other reason that your people are finding you so well is because you're amazing at putting out 
your expectations, which I talk about all the time too, like our client expectations, making sure that we let people know, you know, these are my boundaries. This is when I'm available, like just being mm -hmm. upfront and honest. And then mm -hmm. if, if th that doesn't work for them, that's okay. Like there's been numerous times I've sent clients to other organizers because it just wasn't the right fit and that's okay. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But being upfront and honest and letting them know instead of wasting my time, wasting their time, trying to, you know, like that's just, it's too much stress and too much, you know, anxiety for me. I'd rather know at the beginning, let them know what my availability mm -hmm. is and, and what my boundaries are. And then mm -hmm. either it works or it doesn't. Um, right. So let's go into the social media stuff, right? So like, <laughs> <laughs> so now you're doing a lot more with social media, but back in the beginning when like you first joined the membership and around like March, April-ish, what I have noticed from teachers specifically that I've coached is, and I think it's it's just because as a teacher, you don't, like, you're not supposed to put your stuff out on social media because you don't want your kids or the, or the parents of their kids, like, it's a very separated, like, I'm the teacher, you all are the, the students, I'm, I don't necessarily need to put myself out there for you all to see my personal life, right? Mm -hmm. So a lot of teachers, when we're starting a business, what I've noticed is when you come in, you still have that mindset of, well, I don't want to put myself out for people to see, right? Um, and so you had mentioned it before we hit record that back when you first joined, um, I looked over your website and I was like, Leslie, you need a photo of yourself. Like they need to be able to see. And that just the idea of putting your photo on your website mm -hmm. was a little like, ah. Mm -hmm. So how did you go from that to being more comfortable now? Okay, so I still have my personal social medias and I don't intertwine them necessarily with my business. In other words, they're private. They're, they're just the people who were there kind of before my business. And my business is for whoever wants to see it. Um, and and for me, that was important because I, I don't always trust everything in social media. I'm, I'll be honest with you. And that's okay because I think we have to have some parameters and boundaries in our lives. So, but my business content is for anybody who clicks on me and wants to see it. And I, I mean, immediately you told me to go, go get your name on Instagram, even if you're not doing it, get your name on Facebook. And, so that I had my, um, handles I don't know what they're called um mm -hmm. so I had that and so I kind of had it and I was like well I'll you know put some pretty little canva things up there you know I'll put some inspirational quotes and I was doing those things and yeah some people joined some people started watching but I was not getting anywhere and I listened to so many podcasts um and there's a lady that's local to my area that was constantly talking about you've got to be authentic and people have to see you they can't like you. They can't know you. They can't trust you if they don't see you. Like even now, sometimes when you're having a, say a plumber come to your house, you get a picture of the person that's supposed to come, like comes in the app. So you know who's coming to your house so that it's not a random person. Well, that made sense to me. Like if somebody's going to come into my house, they're going to go through all of my belongings as personal as that can become. I kind of need to know that I trust them and want them there. And so for me, it was about me getting out of my way and just putting myself out there so that other people could see who I am. And it was not in a fake way. It, it, what I tell people, would, what you see with me most of the time is just what you get. Like there's not a lot of, I just, I just say what I think and, and, and that's just who I am, um, good or bad, take it, you know, however. But I felt like just putting my videos out there or photographs out there with me in it help people just to see who might be coming to their house if they decided to hire me. Does that make sense? Oh yeah. No. And, and what I love about what you said was for you, what felt comfortable to be able to do that because you knew you needed to do that and put yourself out there. So you decided, okay, let me put a boundary in place where my personal mm -hmm. stuff stays personal. So mm -hmm. the, you know, on my personal page, that's private, I can post like my family photos and the things mm -hmm. like that. But then let me create the business page and then make sure I'm showing myself on there. So then it helped you be comfortable. And sometimes or a lot of times in business, when we know what we need to do, it's more about taking that confident action 
but also looking and seeing, okay, is there maybe a boundary I should put in place mm -hmm. that helps me feel more comfortable mm -hmm. to take mm -hmm. that confident action? Right. So like I do some photos and videos inside my own home, but you would never see my, like my entire house where you could pinpoint anything. You know what I'm saying? Like, um, if somebody decided to creep me, which I don't think anybody will, but I'm just saying like you, you can put those boundaries in there and keep yourself safe to you and still mm -hmm. put your content out. A lot of my content I record in my car, like when I'm just talking, because that's easy. I have the little thing. You can just set your phone up, right. And just talk to the phone while you're driving. For me, that's easy. I'm in the car. Like I, that's when my brain is just rolling sometimes. And it just, is easy to have that conversation conversation quote unquote with um the people that I'm speaking to yeah yeah and did you see a difference because you mentioned at first you were just putting out like kind of the the standard templates of like a Q&A or, or just words on a screen with a photo mm -hmm. versus once you started putting your photo and doing videos even if the videos were just you have like some of your stuff is literally just on my my way to work or on my way to a session, like super quick and, and easy, mm -hmm. but it makes you super relatable. Did you notice that that made a difference so, when you started? What I've noticed is even still, like if I do a carousel or a static post, um, I mean, I get some, some engagement with it, not a lot, but it's there because I'm trying to put content out to help people as well. I'm not trying to sell myself in everything that I do. Um, and so some of it, you can take my content and, you know, use it in your own space. But what gets the most engagement that I see are anything that has video, anything that has my face. Even if I take a headshot and I put content on top of that, that gets more engagement than if I had that same content and had it on just a beautiful graphic that I could pick in Canva. And I don't know why that is, but I think it's the relatable factor. I think that's what makes people, what they say, stop the scroll and just actually stop and look at it for a minute. Because, oh, that's Leslie. Like, what is she saying? Not, there's a mountain scene. What is Leslie saying, right? Um, yeah. And so I think that, that that does help. And, like, I've, I've listened to people, and they say it. And, and the more I realize and look at my own habits on social media, you don't see everything that everybody posts. Mm -mm. So I feel like I'm saying a lot sometimes, but some of my people are not ever seeing that. And there's the people that I learned about called the lurkers that I realized I was the people who are watching, but they're not necessarily engaging. And then when they're ready, when the time is right for them, they hit the DM button and they let you know that they're ready. And you kind of forgot they were even there because they weren't liking anything or commenting on anything, but they're seeing what you're putting out anyway. And to me, that has, that has, I have people coming, this is March when we're recording this, coming back to me from October when they first found me I've not heard from them since and they're like hey I'm ready did you remember me I'm like yes I remember you let me pull out my notes okay let's go <laughs> yeah well and and what I what I've been um kind of researching recently is is more of like the ideal clients and you know helping with that because that's so important um especially with the course I'm creating I want to make sure there's pieces of that in there to help someone starting their organizing business but what I've realized and learned is the more research I do with social media, because, you know, the landscape has changed from what it was even just a few years mm -hmm. ago. So now if you think about an upside down triangle, the top part, if it's in three sections, so the top part is the part that it could go viral and you're going to get a ton of likes and a ton of whatever, mm -hmm. but they're not ready to buy. They're just, mm -hmm. they're like, you know, maybe two to three steps behind your person that's ready to buy. They're more of like the cold leads, so to speak. Mm -hmm. Then in the middle, you have the people that are warming up to you. They're going to like a little bit of stuff or they may put a heart here or there, um, but they're starting to warm up, but they're still not ready to buy. It's mm -hmm. the people at the bottom part of the triangle that are less likely to click a like. They're less likely to comment but they're ready to, to buy. They're your ideal mm -hmm. person. Mm -hmm. And if your content, that's why sometimes a lot of the um, analytics and things that we look at are, can be, it can confuse you because you're like, mm -hmm. oh, I didn't get that many likes or I didn't get that many comments on it. But then mm -hmm. you hear from someone and they're like, oh, I saw that one and now I'm ready to buy. And so, mm -hmm. you know, it's good to look at our analytics, but also keeping in mind with what we do, 
that just because it didn't go viral does not mean there's not people out there seeing it, especially when we're talking to our person at their tipping point. Like they are right. at the point of ready to purchase. Right. Though That's the content we want to create. And I love what you're doing because you've said from the very beginning, I'm here to teach. I'm here to help people in their own stuff, whether I'm the one doing it for them or not which is why your content's done so well is because that really is your heart is you just want to mm -hmm. help them in their home, mm -hmm. whether they're purchasing coaching sessions from you or not, or whether, mm -hmm. you know, like just for free, you want to help them. Mm -hmm. And I love that about what you're doing. So tell me a little bit, because I know that it has kind of um, transformed over the past year, right? Like, and that's what I love, love, love. And I know I say it all the time, but about being an organizer is you know, we can take who we were, we can kind of use that to, to become the type of organizer we are, but then we can also let it evolve over time. And so for you, it has absolutely done that. You went from, I don't even want to put my photo on my website to the majority of the stuff I do is online. And now I'm creating these online and like, you know, mm -hmm. uh, workshops and different things. Mm -hmm. So tell me a little bit about how that part evolved for you and, and where that came from. Um, I think it just was a um, getting confident with my myself and and kind of letting go that. So I started really noticing that the people who were being attracted to me were not necessarily people that I knew. Yes, my family and friends have joined my pages and whatever, but for the most part, the people that were going to hire me were not those people. Um, and so I was like, well, why am I afraid for anybody to know who I am? Like, I don't have anything to hide. So I need to let the people know and just kind of put myself where they can see who I am and not be worried about the people who already know me and what they're going to think. And that's kind of how my mind was like, okay, but people know I don't put, because I don't on my personal page. They know I don't post a lot. They know I don't do these things, but they're going to think, well, why is she doing that now? And I had to get out of my own way and just say, I'm doing it because I'm a business person and now that's what I have to do because that's different than my personal life. And um, so I did that and the more comfortable that I got doing it and the more I realized nobody's sending me like ugly DMs because I look ridiculous or whatever on camera, I guess I got okay with the fact that I'm just going to put it out there. You know, um, this morning I recorded, I haven't posted yet, but I recorded my closet. I had like three pair of shoes in the middle of the floor I'm an organizer. People think that our shoes are just going to be put away immediately. Well, no, sometimes life happens and that's where they are. And so I just recorded a quick video to show like, this is real life for me, but watch how quickly I can put this away. And now my closet's back together. That's your goal, right? So that's just, that's the teaching piece to me is showing people in my real life, this is what's going on. I think one day I posted a video, um, one of my, I think my child had put the, the off spray or maybe my husband with the canned goods in our pantry. I'm like, why would you have ever done that is what my mind thought. And then I thought, no, that's good content. Like somebody needs to see my family who knows where everything belongs because I tell them still gets it wrong sometimes. So I think that that might help people relate to you. Like we're not perfect because we're organizers. Our families are not perfect because we're organizers. Our homes are definitely not perfect, right? We live because we're real people and real mm -hmm. people have real situations that happen. I think letting other people in on that and they know that you're, you're not fake about it is a big piece. I really do. Yeah. And then with a lot of the feedback you were getting, so you started doing coaching, helping other people in their homes, do the, the hands and feet work for, you know, like you, you were doing the virtual organizing sessions. Mm -hmm. Now that's kind of pivoted. So how did that part come about for you? Um, what, do, doing the virtual sessions, you mean? No, no, no. Like the meal planning and the other stuff oh, that you've oh, now oh. added. Okay. So the, like the, the workshop piece, and I'm still kind of working on the best way to implement it because I did my little free trial and, and got good feedback on it, um, is because I see, so organizing has not been baskets and where do you put your green beans? It's, it is that, but it's also... What does my daily schedule look like? How can I get the children from soccer to ballet and get the homework in it? And how can I make sure everybody eats? There's so many things in your daily life that have to be organized. Um, and so meal planning for me was just one of those things that was 
I developed it on my own. I'm sure there are like books and things about it, but because it was out of necessity and my brain was able to do that. So I was like, well, I know there are busy people who are following me. There are moms, there are um, people who work in 12 hour shifts. They come home, nobody wants to cook, but then everybody's got to eat, right? So I started developing these virtual pieces that I can monetize for myself, yes, but they help my people, my real people who need, those are pain points for them. And, and the, when I did the first freebie of the, the meal planning workshop, what came back to me was exactly what I was suspecting. People just hadn't thought, I didn't have anything brand new to add. There was, it is in the universe somewhere. People just hadn't thought of the tips and tricks that I was giving them. And so that's that coaching piece. Like, let me show you what I think you're missing. And then, hey, send me a message when you're doing it, and I'll be happy to reply and help you if you're having a sticking point. Because that's the other part of it. I don't really want to walk out of your house, close your back door, and tell you goodbye. I want you to send me a message. If where we put the X, Y, Z is not working, I can help you fix it because now I know you're safe. Whatever it is, I want to be that person that helps you. Now, obviously, we can't give all of our time to one client, you know, like, but I want to be that person that helps you get over whatever your pain point is. I have a couple of clients. I just pop in. I'm like, hey, how's the upkeep going in the XYZ space? Because I know that that was a pain point and that's what they need. And they're like, oh, thank you so much. Because, yeah, I just need to go reset it. And, and they'll text me back later. And they're like, okay, everything's done. We're, we're good to go. That's the piece that some people need, just a kind of holding your hand at the end. Yeah. Well, and I love what you're doing because that's exactly like when I launched the membership, that's what it was for me. I was like, it's a, it's a way for me to interact with the people listening, but also it's not just about necessarily like the coaching sessions. Those are great. I love doing coaching sessions. It's the in-between knowing like they right. have full access to me where if you have a question and you need me to hop on a five minute phone call and answer something or, you know, like Ebony from the membership right before we hopped on this, like she <clears throat> called me real quick and she was like, Hey, I have this quick question. And like within five minutes we had it, we had her unstuck, so to speak. And then, you know, we hopped off the call, kept going. And so that's what I love about community is that mm -hmm. it's more about the community, like it's about all of us, like the, the more we all do better and the more we all support one another, the better it is for all of us. It's not just about me getting better or me getting paid or me getting whatever. It's more about the collective doing good. Right. And, and I, you know, when I first started thinking about becoming an organizer until I found your podcast, I had no idea that there was a community, there was anybody connecting. I, assumed it was like most other businesses where everybody was against each other like you're my competition kind of thing that's not the case I have um, met some organizers here in my local area and we've connected and like you know if, if they need help on a job and I'm available we can do that and vice versa or if I can't take a client and they, so it is a it really is a community of people who come together and help each other I mean like in our little POC we can send each other message like hey I have this going on does anybody have a product I, that they already know of that I can use? That's so helpful to me. It, it took out, takes hours away from my research or just my knowledge, not knowing something that's going to help my client, help my person out. So I just, it's, it's a great thing for me. Yeah, no, I love it. And then, so you've got your meal planning that you're doing, you're doing the virtual coaching, you're um, I know you said not too long ago that when you get booked out on the weekends, that's when you're, you know, you may end up retiring from teaching and doing this thing full time. Um, but what I love is that, and, and for all of us as organizers, there's multiple ways we can have streams of income coming in, but, yes. you know, and being very strategic about building that. But what I love about you and your journey and everything you've been through is that a, you've been willing to not just be the teacher, but to also be the student, you know? Mm -hmm. And I think a lot of us, sometimes when we come into business, we almost think like, oh, well, I'm the boss now, or, you know, and like, that's going to keep people stuck. Like if you don't have that, like, even for me, I come, I, every single day I come with the mindset of what can I learn? Like, I know there's mm -hmm. more I can learn. And then mm -hmm. the more I learn, the more I can help my people. And same with all of us as organizers and, you know, thinking of those additional streams of income and additional things we can do and, and just being very strategic, but then also giving it the time it needs 
to grow into something. And that was huge for me, as you mentioned earlier, like mm-hmm. I wanted it instantly. I saw other people who seemed to have, they had it, but I had no idea what their journey was. I just didn't. And now I, I see some of our new people coming in who are just launching their businesses in the community. And I'm, and I'm hearing you tell them the world, plant the seeds, plant the seeds. And the more seeds I plant, I realize some of them are the seeds that are going to pop up immediately because in your yard that happens. And some of them are the seeds that have to germinate for a long period of time. And then they're going to, and they, they might not, they may just really make a little bit of pollen that tells the next person that that's who needed you, right? So, I mean, for me, yes, I've never been a sit back and wait on it kind of girl. I like it to happen and I like to know what the plan is and I want to follow it. And if you know my, um, my story with God and adoption, that is who I was. I was like, you're going to tell me the plan. And God was like, man, that's not the way it works. You're going to wait for me to tell you when it's time. And, and, and I've had a true peace since I've released a lot of that. Like, I have to know when is this business going to go full time? When is, when can I hire a team? When and I let that go? And I mean, it just is flowing and things are coming. And I think it's because I've finally just released my control of that. And the seeds that I planted a long time ago are coming. They're popping up now. Yeah, I love it. Well, and as we're ending real quick, it reminds me of just the other day. It was like three or four days ago. Um, I was listening to a sermon and he was talking about the, what you held on to, he said, if you have gotten a word from God and you have held on to it, and that's what has gotten you here for the next season, you may be, it may be the fact that you need to actually let it go mm-hmm. to go where you're needing to go. Like what got mm-hmm. you here can't get you there. So yes, mm-hmm. you know, you held on to a word, you got where you are, but are you maybe at a point where you need to just release it and let, and exactly what you just said, let God do what he does and let Mm -hmm. him bring it to us when it's time. And so there I was blubbering like a baby and I'm like, okay, God, I'm really, (laughs) you know, like hands in the air and crying. And, but I felt, I felt it coming off of me because up until now it has been that, like, you know, I'm holding on to the word, God, you promised me I'm holding mm-hmm. on to this and, and that control and not control piece, but that just like, you know, oh, me holding on to this is how we're going to get there. But mm-hmm. now, you know, and God works in mysterious ways with all of us. We're all in different <laughs> seasons. And so sometimes you can be in the season of, I need to hold on to the word. And then other times you can be in the season of, okay, I need to let go. And what I realized the second I let go, it was almost like, you know, like a water hose when it's kinked and then you let it go and all of a sudden mm-hmm. everything's flowing. Mm-hmm. Like that is how it felt once I let it go and was like, all right, God, like you help me. Like, and and I, but saying that, I also have to remind myself almost daily, like, no, I let that go. God's going to bring me what I need because then I, mm-hmm. I try to go back to that old mindset. And I'm like, no, 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 mm-hmm. keep, you know. Mm-hmm. And so I just, I'm very proud of you for like, the mindset shifts you've had, what you've learned, the being willing to put yourself out there and just show people who you are, because authenticity is what's going to stand out in this quote unquote fake social media world that we live in. Mm -hmm. Everyone can rent a car and stand by it and be like, look at my new vehicle or whatever. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But the ones of us that are showing up saying, listen, I'm just like you. This is me. If you're my person, you know, and then being okay with the fact that not everyone's our person, but thank God for that. Because if you try to work with the people that aren't your people, it, it's like (laughs) nails on a chalkboard anyways, like, no, thank you. (laughs) Mm -hmm. Right. Exactly. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Oh my goodness. Thank you so much for coming on the show. Thank you for having me. Yeah. Will you tell everyone um, where they can follow you and go see what you're doing and go give you some love? Yeah. So on my website is organizing with Leslie that's ing organizing with Leslie and my Instagram and my Facebook are the same thing I don't I guess you just type it in the search I don't even know but it's organizing with Leslie well and (laughs) I'll I'll make I'll make sure to put it in the show notes too so then that way they can just link and go give you some love and and I would I would challenge a lot of you that are listening if you are struggling with social media stuff because you think it has to be perfect watch some of Leslie's videos watch what she does (laughs) Because it's not that it's not perfect. It's like 
perfectly imperfect. Like it's, it's, mm -hmm. it's, it's, you almost feel like you're in the car with her and she's just talking to you or like you're in the room with her. And that's what makes it appealing is because it's not so curated mm -hmm. and perfect quote mm -hmm. unquote. Mm -hmm. So yeah, I love it. Perfect. Well, thank you. And then for those of you listening, we will definitely catch you in the next one. Have a blessed day. Thank you.